We gotta do the intro. Gotta get out of Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. You disgust me. Who gives a shit? Go on. I made it the fuck up. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. All right. Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. T-shirt historian, how you doing? Guys? Hello. Guys, we're oh, live. Hello. <laughs> I thought Hi. it was just you talking. I didn't know. <laughs> no. I thought you were going to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we thought you were going to do the usual right. like monologue. No, that's only on that's that's only on uh, Saturdays. Oh. All right, we we messed this up. Let's let's start the show over again. <laughs> again, from the top. <sighs> you ruined everything. How's everything going? Well, it'll be going great if uh, I can iron out some of these technical difficulties. Apparently, there was some changes in some stuff and. Downloading the usual uh, YouTube videos and stuff is kind of proving to be a bit of a pain in the ass. Oh no! Yeah, but that's okay. I think I've got it. I think I might have it a little bit ironed out. Although uh, it does have a bit of a watermark on it, so. <laughs> but I, I don't think that's a big deal. I mean, you know, that just keep us insulated. And <gasps> you know, I told her she didn't have to turn her cam on, but. Uh, she she did it anyway. Thank you very much, Harmony. It's good to see you. You're muted. Well, she I enjoy the how when I told you I probably couldn't make it. You're like, well, you don't have to use your camera. Like you knew what it was. <laughs> you're like, yeah, she she just didn't pour makeup on. Well, I mean, if it helps. It helps. <laughs> I didn't put my makeup on either. You didn't even yeah. put pants on. Oh, those are PJs. Yeah. Yeah, they're PJs. His method of convincing me was Iron Caster's in his pajamas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. He, he could stand up and show you. but I don't need to see it. It's okay. Oh. Okay, Wait, those, those are actually kind of cool. Those are Star Wars pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like these. Very cool. Um, And also oh. foot video. Ew. <laughs> They'll never let you forget it. Yeah, nobody wants oh, to see no. your feet, Iron Caster. We smell defeat. <laughs> he takes a shower when he gets home, so. Anyway. You know, that supposedly makes it worse, I've heard. I Never mind. Go what? on. No, let's not talk about foot fetishes. Let's go on. <laughs> I mean, you know. There's no going on. We've reached the end of the road. <laughs> okay. This sole subject is going to ruin the show. <sighs> I I have not seen Kong X Godzilla yet, but you have, Greg. Greg has. Why wouldn't I see that? <laughs> I, I knew you would see it. I mean, you're the, you're the kaiju fetishist amongst us, so tell us, what, how, how was it? Well, apparently I'm the only person who didn't like it. <laughs> so. Really? Really? Everyone, all the kaiju. Well, you know how 
ultra fans or like all the kaiju fans are like oh god it's the best it's the freaking best kaiju movie of all time of it like they won't shut up about it it's hard to see objectively when you're a super fan i guess but i didn't enjoy it you're not alone you're not alone um well what era of like godzilla do you tend to lean towards more i like the heisei era that's my favorite era do, do you think it could be the fact that, like, they're not using rubber suits anymore, that it's all CG? Well, the CG in this was particularly bad, in my opinion. Hmm. But that doesn't bother me as much. The fact that the, the thing that bothers me the most was this was 90% Kong. If you're a big King Kong fan, you're going to love this. But why? I don't know why they released this movie when we're getting a Planet of the Apes movie with even more CGI apes that are exact. Do they look exactly the same as King Kong? That's coming out soon. It's like too many apes. Oh, I don't know why I... they called it God's Godzilla X Kong. Godzilla was barely like <laughs> in it. I'm... It's mostly a Kong movie. I'm, I'm just going to take a, what's probably going to be seen as a racist stab here and say that, um, Americans really do shitty Godzilla films. Um, the Japanese are the only ones who do good Godzilla films. I really the, like it, the first three. I'm a fan of the first three in the MonsterVerse, but this one, uh, this one dropped off for me. They, they all suck. Um, the only one that was good was Kong Skull Island, and that's because it was Kong no, all by himself. The, the, the 2014 one doesn't suck. It has problems, but it doesn't suck. Was that um, the one with Brian Cranston? Yes, he was in it for okay. like two minutes. Oh uh, yeah, that's. That's one of the problems. No, <laughs> that, that Godzilla movie sucked. You know, I, I've always been I've, been I've been a big fan of the Godzilla stuff, but just these American CGI movies, I have little interest mm -hmm. in at all. Like, I want to see guys in rubber suits like destroying little model buildings. That's why I've largely gone to a lot of the Toku Sautsu. That's why I've started watching more Kamen Rider and Ultraman and Super Sentai because I get to go watch that because I want to see like little explosions just like guys in rubber suits are like posing and looking cool. Yeah, well, like I said, the Heisei er era is my favorite for Godzilla and that includes the Gamera movies too and those are excellent. Probably the best kaiju movies ever. Actually. I, I, for I forget. Is it is Heisei... Er no, it's it's uh, Millennium Era that uh, Final Wars came out, right? Yeah, I like Millennium too. I think those uh, movies are pretty fun. They are way fun. But... I mean, let's be honest. The Japanese know how to make Godzilla movies, but like, there are so many really unwatchable bad ones, especially in the Showa era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so you can't get away from some of those bad ones. And I think Shin Godzilla sucked. I'm gonna get Shin persecuted Godzilla for sucked. that. No, yeah. it sucked horrible. It it, it was... sucked. <laughs> it sucked vinegary, sweaty post gym workout balls. It was balls. I still think it's better than this movie, though. Um, I did wow, not that's bad. hate Shin Godzilla. I can oh, no, say I, that much. I hated it, it. It's almost unwatchable for me. It's like, we, and but I th I think to kind of get back to what you were saying about you know Americans can't do the can't do the Godzilla movies. It's sort of co I and this is kind of going off of my own idea is that I think it's because they quite literally have an entire industry that just does these the the tokusatsu because you have people who do that as like. A, as a job this is part of the the culture there so they hmm. know how to do these they know how to set this up to have a big giant mon a big you know silly monster fight that yeah which is the whole reason why you're there because you want to watch yeah. that yeah well, well it's not it's not just a paycheck to them it's a, it's almost like an art form if you want to get deep about it it could also be the fact that we dropped the bomb and they were on the receiving end so it's kind of like a different viewpoint on the whole thing. Uh, there's that. Thank you know, you. I did I did run across somebody who posted some shit up on Twitter today about about how uh, you know Americans haven't you know apologized for dropping the bombs on on uh, Japan yeah. in World War II, and I'm just kind of like, did you guys forget that you uh, attacked us first? You know, we didn't have to yeah. do that. You, you could have left us no, alone. I didn't and, have to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I totally disagree about MonsterVerse. I like the first three. The first one frustrates me greatly. 
because of Brian Cranston, what happens, and, and the fact that they cut away too frequently when there could have been cool fights. And I don't yes. like I don't like the Muto design. It kind of looks like your first year like art school guy like doing CG like every monster from 2004 until that point looked like that. Cloverfield looked like that. The aliens in War of the Worlds looked <sighs> like that. It's just a very generic design to me. God, you, I, just... I hated Cloverfield. I, I liked Cloverfield, but um, I was also like 18 when I saw it, or 19 maybe. But they never showed the monster, or they no. showed it for like a split second, which I think it would have been very good if they had. But I really just like found footage movies. Um, they don't make me motion sick. I think they're fun. And um, I cried in Cloverfield. I don't know why, but I it made me cry, and I'm not entirely oh, sure what about it did. <laughs> I didn't cry for the characters because those characters were unlikable assholes. I I do like some found footage films. I mean, Blair Witch was okay after I watched it a few times and got into it a little bit more. Uh, Cannibal Holocaust was obviously one of my favorite found footage movies ever. I'll tell you an obscure one that everyone who's into horror movies needs to watch. It's an Australian movie called Lake Mungo. You ever heard of that? No. Well, I heard of Wolf. Wolf Creek, but yeah, it's kind of an indie film, but it is really creepy. If you want to be creeped the hell out, go watch that. If you like ghost story stuff, go watch Lake Mungo. It's worth it. It's worth. It. Hmm. I'll have to check I, it out. I will actually. It's my favorite genre. Yeah, Horror? it's like mm -hmm. really scary. <laughs> well, dang. Okay, so. We're going to have to talk horror movies at some point then because I have yeah. a lot of them, but most of mine are old because I, I really kind of splurged out in the, um, the Lucio Fulci uh, Italian splatter horror type stuff, the Dario Argento stuff, all that. I like yes. ghost stories. I'm a big mm. horror movie fan as well. I have a sizable mm -hmm. collection. I don't really like the Italian stuff, but that's okay. I love the Italian. I'm story. in the minority. I think that the second Monster Verse movie, which is King of the Monsters, was the best one. And the reason I think that is because the whole movie from beginning to end was nothing but monsters and cool military stuff. That gets me. Like they didn't there was not a single moment where some cool military thing wasn't happening. That's mm -hmm. what I kinda I kinda like that. I I can dig it. A lot of people didn't like it, but that's my thing. I, I didn't like any of the American Godzilla movies. Not a single one. But um, <clears throat> I did like... I do like the King Kong movies because, yeah, Kong is really my guy. Well, then you but, would uh, like this one because it is mostly about Kong. And there are long sequences where there's no humans at all. It's just Kong with no dialogue. And, like, you have to read his emotions and stuff. Just not And really. see, I... That's what I've heard a lot of people saying is like, you know, they would have been happy if the film had just totally been Kong in the hollow earth and that was the entire film. Yeah. No human <laughs> stuff at all. They could have done it. They could have made it even good. better if they went and like had everything, everyone in rubber suits. Yeah. But I, you don't know? Have, I don't have much hope for the future of the American franchise. What were you saying, T-shirt? Oh, you, you know, one of the things that I loved, uh, we saw <clears throat> we saw Pacific Rim in the theater. And, you know, um, my friends and I were watching it and I, I, you know, smacked my friend next to me and I was like, dude, you notice how like all the all the monsters that they're fighting have that rubber suit look? Because they, they had that same, you know, all the, the limbs and everything moved kind of like rubber suit looking. I'm just kind of like, this dude gets it. That's why huh. I don't think CGI is the cause of anything. It's it's people doing it wrong. Like Guillermo mm -hmm. del Toro is a huge Japanese Godzilla fan, like he knew what he was doing. I love Pacific mm -hmm. Rim. I watch it all the time. Oh yeah, that was a great. It was funny too. Um, yeah. The scenes with like, Ron Perlman. Yeah, I like Del Toro's <laughs> films. Me too. The CGI in him is actually very good too. Because he knows what how to use it. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, I talk love. Talk about the second one. No. Mm. The second one was just trash, but he wasn't involved with it, so. Uh -uh. Well, I, I have a tiny bit of show and tell, um, and I, I think Ginger probably like at least one of these a lot. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. But the first thing I got 
And this was sent over gratis by our dear friend Nick Beardia. Ah. Oh. And this this got sent over from uh, some publishing place in North Carolina. And it is super nice. It is really, really nicely bound. It looks the color is really bright and vivid. This was this was so nice when I got it, and I was just like, "Dang, I gotta show this off." So, for for those of us out here who may not be as aware, what can you tell me about like the the setting with the book? Like, what's the what's what's the what's what's the hook? It is horror, basically. It's it's a horror game. Um, since it's a module. I, I don't want to speak to too much about what it is about because it would give away the game. But uh, yeah, the back cover says the town of Adidon has gone silent for two weeks and travelers passing by vanish without a trace. You are being sent to investigate the cause and if possible, bring an end to what is causing the disturbance. Um, there are some really awesome... Uh, horror movie homages in here. I don't want to say what. Uh, there's some really good uh, thrills and things. Uh, it is... It's nicely laid out. It's very well detailed. Um, even though the art is all AI generated, it looks really good. Um, I can't recommend this enough. Especially if you do... This is not actually made for 5e. It is made uh, for his Dice and Demons system. That he's uh, putting out, and it, that's free right now. But um, uh, this adventure, as far as I know, I, it is free. But uh, you know, of course, if you if you buy the physical copy, he's going to use the money generated from that to hire an artist and redo it all with art. Um, that's a nice way to do it. Yeah, but it is, is. It's really good. I recommend it. I can't okay. recommend it enough. If memory serves, I think he also said something to the extent of like you would get access to the updated, like newer editions as it goes along. Mm -hmm. uh, violence, like I said, it's for dice and demons, but uh, it is pretty much mostly OSR compatible. Um, you could probably make it work for 5e if you had to. And I really like McBeardia. He's been playing for quite a long time, and he's uh, he he knows very well the systems. So mm -hmm. I have no doubt this is good. I haven't read it yet. I I have the PDF. I just I haven't gotten around to it yet. But you're selling me on it more and more. It shouldn't take that much because it's McBeardia, and I like everything they do. <laughs> it's well, it's been a lot of fun to talk with him behind the scenes. Yeah, like, we'll, we'll, I'll just strike up a little conversation yeah. with them and we'll kind of, you know, shit post about something, you know, here or there. Good guy. Well, this yeah, is the other thing yeah. I, I thought Harmony would enjoy. This is... Uh, oh, there's more? Ep yeah, this is Epic Encounters, Local Legends. Uh, I kickstarted this quite a ways back for my Bard Sung uh, game. So this is part of the All In Pledge. And it is uh, for 5e. Mm. For 5e compatible. My box came in, and it has maps of all the different locales. It has several Ooh. maps. Can you show the maps more? Can you unfold that? Uh, I don't know. I can't show the whole thing off on screen because it's too big. Ah, uh, yeah. But it is big map, really big map. Ooh. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, there's like several of them because. What it is, it's a series of smaller encounters that are possible to be played through in a single session or a single night, like just kind of off the cuff. And it's originally designed for the Bardsung game, which uh, is a tabletop role-playing game. But uh, apparently it also has some 5e compatibility, like all of the Epic Encounters stuff. It has like fully statted out uh, encounters with unique uh, characters like uh, Marshina the Night Hag and the Nodding Dragon and Head Spinner and the Owl Bear, <laughs> Captain Bloodbeard McGraw. It's pretty cool. 
I'm not sure when this is going to actually hit the store shelves, but it shouldn't be too long. And the best part, and I know CB will enjoy this. Oh, is CB here? Uh, I don't think she's here. I can make her here. You should, you should, bring, you should bring her here. Many minis. Uh, uh, she's minis. not online. She's not here. Uh. Yes. Uh. Yeah. Like all wow. of this. Oh, all yeah. right. Now, okay, now you're selling me. Mm -hmm. I, like all I not... all of... mm, go on. <laughs> if if memory serves, like the epic encounters tend to have a bit of a theme to their releases. Uh, what was the theme for this one? Uh, what do you mean a theme? I mean, don't they do like little scenario boxes where you can like get a yeah. bunch of goblins, get a bunch? Right, but like I said, this is a whole series of pre-programmed -pro, pre one-off encounters oh, with different things that you yeah. can just drop in. I think the uh, only time I've seen those... No, I think my game store has some of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, well, so this is effectively like multiple of those boxes? Well, yeah, basically it's one big box with lots of different... And look, here this is like a um, dead guy on a horse token that I can paint up. And these are, this is just the smaller end of the stuff, like with the little wraiths and things like that, and the animated swords and garbage. The cool stuff is actually in the other box, or in the other part of the box, I should say. It's oh, really? Harder to get out, but let me manage. I believe in you. Oh, yeah. Let's see him. Yeah, we have. A full-fledged, unique hill giant. Does does he have a full-on like mustache? He does. Oh, he amazing. does. I I can't wait to paint this up. Oh. There's a griffin. Um, dragon. Yep, this is a smaller one, but mm -hmm. it is a dragon. Um, this guy is the berserker. Got a little tubby belly on him, which I kind of like. He has some personality to him. Um, I forget what this thing is, but the artwork for it looks badass. Maybe looks it like could a, be a transformed vampire. <laughs> Something like that. And yes, owlbear. we have an owl bear. Oh, that's a and, nice one. And this guy doesn't look fat either. I mean, this this owl bear has been hitting the gym. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm Al Bear. He's strong. He's strong. Is that a yes. Witch? Uh, I believe this is a wraith of some sort. Wraith? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the pirate captain, the ghostly pirate captain. And you see, he's got like Ooh. a water base. I really like that base. Yeah, it's cool. These bases are cool, and an Efreet. Ooh. I, These are going to be fun. To see how you paint the sword on that one? Oh, I'm going to enjoy it. And these cards are part of the the deck. And what happens is, is they, as you draw them at different uh, times, it randomizes what the creature does. Oh. From round to round. Yeah, okay, that's what so it that's is. That's part of the bard song system. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, the diamus. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. So it's a giant bat. You have things for the swarms and everything else. So it really makes all the little encounters come to life for Bard Song. Yeah, I um I uh, kind of looked through one of these at uh CB's house because she'd been getting one or two of these and uh I think she was gonna paint the minis from them, but then like somebody from Twitter sent her a bunch of minis and now she has a backlog of tw of free Twitter minis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'm fully aware how you can get uh, pretty behind on miniatures, but but I yeah. already had Bard Sung, so when they when they announced this, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna jump on that, and I'm not sorry I did, because uh, like I said, all this stuff perfectly lines up with your your five E games and stuff, and you can use it how you wish. Um. The miniatures, as you can see, look really, really good, high quality. SFG always does a really good job with their minis. Um, 
can't say enough good things about it. I don't know what the retail is uh, when it finally comes to hit the store shelves, because like I said, this is the Kickstarter version. But, uh, you know, I'd imagine a set like that probably be about 60 bucks at the most. So that's not bad for all those. Nah. That was, that's actually more minis than I expected it to have. Mm -hmm. And it's complete encounters. So, you know, if you just want to, you know, drop an free encounter in on your players that night, you've got a full one right there or, you know, or a hill giant encounter or a griffin encounter. It's all right there for you. I thought it was cool. <clears throat> I quite enjoy Ifrit encounters. You really, you throw Ifrit at your players a lot? Um, Surprisingly often, yeah. I don't know why, it just comes up often. <laughs> well, you know you know how some games go. Some people say a wizard did it. Some people say like a, a dragon did it. In, in, you know, Ginger's case, it's an Ifrit did it. Yeah, well, yeah. What about the rock Ryan Sasha? at Rolling Bones. Yeah. Oh, that's a fun one. Unpainted BTAS set. Unpainted Witcher, unpainted Zombie, Side Undead, or Alive Shaming. Yeah. I got you beat on that, Ryan. I've got a, I've got a lot more than that. And I got more coming because I've got uh, that new Zombicide White Death stuff uh, coming whenever. In fact, um, <laughs> tomorrow I've got... Um, Oh, Lordy, I've got uh, my Black Rose Wars uh, set coming in. So that ought to be a ton of really, really nice miniatures from uh, Italy coming in. Hey, Surly. Good to see you, bud. Yeah, I got a lot of them unpainted as well. I um, used to get those um, Fantasy Flight Descent 2nd Edition board games oh, and all the cool. expansions to that. Not because yeah. I wanted to play the board game, because I read the rules to the board game and it did not seem good. Um, but it actually was a great way to get cheap minis for a while. Now, I don't think... I think they have Descent 3rd Edition. Is that a thing now? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. but, um, I've always found that... Uh, Board games with minis are cheaper than buying minis. Yes. Just minis. So that's where I got most well, of mine is Descent. You are wise beyond your years. <laughs> um, yes, I, I have a lot of, I have all the boxes of uh, Descent 2nd Edition and some 1st oh, Edition. Mm -hmm. But I also bought into 3rd Edition. Um, but mainly I bought into 2nd Edition because they have a, an online uh Yes. The program that I bought from Steam where it, the computer plays the dungeon master for you. Yeah, yeah. I um I tried that with a few friends. It was better than a lot of board games, but not as good as D&D. &D. Yeah. I uh, I think that's the problem with a lot of these. Yeah. Yeah. They they make really good dungeon crawls. Mm -hmm. But they don't really make good role-playing games. Yeah, I uh, I agree with that. I'm not usually a fan of board games that are meant to simulate part of a role-playing game without uh, the rest of it, like Descent, like Mice and Mystics. Like, um, those are the two I can think of offhand. Um, actually, you know, there's an exception to that because, um, oh, what is that one? The Deck Builder. That one's really good. Which one? Ascension? Uh, as no, not Ascension. Um, Ascension's the one made by the magic guy. Oh, what is the name of the game? I should know it. It's like actually pretty big right now. Um, mm. I'm, I will think of it right after the topic's dropped, I'm sure. Humblewood like, kind of like a no, board game? not Humblewood. Um, it's like the top one on Board Game Geek, or it's very close. I'm looking that up right now. It's like in the top that. five on Board Game Geek, and I can't remember the name of it. Hmm. Um, if only there was such a website we could go Gloomhaven. to. Gloomhaven. Yeah. All right. Oh, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Oh. Yeah. I, I have Gloomhaven and I have Frosthaven. Mm -hmm. uh, that one's actually pretty good. I think that's the best of the not quite RPG, but board game simulating RPG dungeon crawling combat. I think that's the best of that genre. I, I kind of tend to agree with you. Um, Although it, it really, 
it really caters to a really, really super duper tactical mindset, um, especially the challenge missions where you have to use specific abilities and stuff. Yeah. I, I do like the uh, deck mechanic, though. I think that's pretty neat. It uh, forces you to kind of plan your turns and ration your actions in ways that other games don't quite do. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd be honest. You know what I like about it? Uh, and I <laughs> I almost wish you could incorporate this into a regular role-playing game, is the, the fact that um, you can unlock uh, new characters and abilities and stuff as you play through, even if you lose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that was a trend a couple years back, the legacy format board games, like mm-hmm. um, starting with like, I think Risk Legacy, and then they went to Pandemic Legacy. And then um, there were a bunch of others as well, I think, to jump on that trend. I've unfortunately never gotten to play through one of those. I've always wanted to. They, I, I never thought they sounded particularly great because you needed to have like a group and stick with a group really as you um, as you unlock different things in the game. Um, I'm not sure if I ever quite appreciated that idea for board games, but I can't say too much against it because I've never played a legacy board game. Uh, Kingdom Death Monster is the only one I've played that uh, has legacy issues with it. And well, issues, it has legacy content with it. And it's kind of, it's pretty cool because if you have incorporated enough uh, extra add-ons and stuff like that, uh, the game is going to be different every single time you play it, even if you are trying to play for a specific legacy or something. But um, depending on how you do in each game, I mean, it's like, or in, in every hunt, uh, whatever, you can unlock stuff uh, for different characters, and that can continue on through the rest of the campaign. Uh, but there's also options like the, um, the Giga Lion, where you can actually have four individual characters in a contained adventure where if they succeed it unlocks uh something that you can add to your regular game and um they actually they've released another uh add-on like that with um the legacy butcher which i don't have it's like 60 bucks but uh i'll get it at some point Uh, Hold on just a minute. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Anyway, okay. sorry about that. Oh, yeah. You, you guys want to know the um, greatest board game that's different every time you play it? Which one? Cosmic Encounter. <laughs> it's always Cosmic Encounter. It's always Cosmic Encounter. <laughs> I've played hundreds of board games, and that one's just been my favorite through all of it. There's nothing else like it, Cosmic Encounter. You know, and I've never I, actually asked Greg what his favorite board game is. I've only played a good handful of board games. Um, usual stuff. Settlers of Catan, Carcassonne, which I, I hate. Um, <laughs> I don't like Carcassonne either. That one where somebody is secretly the bad guy. I can't remember the name of it. Dead of Winter, Secret Hitler. Betrayal? No, um, the, the really, really popular one that has like a Boulder Skate version. Betrayal at House of... Yeah, 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 I played uh, that. Um, yeah. We bought the Thing uh, board oh. game, but it was too complicated for us to figure out in the time that we had. So it's like, what the hell are we supposed to be doing? So we didn't play that. Well, I really liked Cthulhu Death May Die. I got to set that up and play it several times with friends, and that was a lot of fun. I, th- I suppose one of my biggest problems is the types of games I do want to play tend to be the more strategy-oriented ones. I've got a copy of Dune, the the re-release of Dune. He's sitting here. I, I've been wanting to play, but unfortunately, I never get a chance to play these, and that's the thing that always drives me nuts. If I get the other family, they want to play a party game. They want to play uh. Cards Against Humanity. They want to play uh, Jackbox, and it's like, I'm lucky if I I'm lucky if I can get tickets to ride to the table. Yeah. Family, yeah, family is hard to is hard to get to play some of these games, especially if they've got lots of pieces and a lot of setup time. Um, as much as I love Zombicide, it's not really something you can pull out for the whole family to play. Yeah, I don't I don't see Grandma wanting to play that. Yeah, 
uh, my brother kills me. I tried to get him to play Ticket to Ride once, and he was like, this is way too complicated. Let's not do this. Let's just play more Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> and then one day, about a year ago, he called me and said, hey, Harmony, come over. I just got this new game that I think you'll like. It's amazing. It's called Dominion. And I'm like, I've I tried to get you to play Dominion like a hundred times, and you said no, too many cards, but okay. I just think there's probably too many board games for me. Like every game yeah. store I go in has an entire wall from yep. floor to ceiling slammed mm-hmm. filled with different board games, like thousands. Like yes. how do you how do you you'll never play them all? Like how do you decide yeah. which ones to play? I guess the reviews, but still um, there's too many. I agree with you. I think there are too many board games right now for the audience because um, they, they do take up a lot of space. It's not mm-hmm. like the average mm-hmm. person wants to get 100 board games. No one has space for that. I've kind of skimmed down to about 30. But I mean, there's nobody has that much money. And while there was like this big board game renaissance, maybe about 10 years ago, um, we're kind of... we. We hit capacity, and uh, it's kind of fizzling out now, and it seems like the best of the genre are going to stay. But I'm not sure that it's... And I could be completely wrong about this. I just haven't seen um, a whole lot of evidence that now is a good time to uh, put out more board games because there's mm-hmm. just so many of them right now. You're right. that I, I don't know how the average person decides what, what's for me and what's not for me. I mean, I think you just basically have to... Uh, look up online. But the good thing behind this, I'm almost done, I swear. The good thing about this is that um, stores like Target, uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, Walmart, they actually have a pretty decent selection at this point. And if you limit your selection uh, as a, if you're new to the hobby and you're looking on shelves at these chain stores, you're probably going to go away with something pretty good because a lot of them have made it there and um like those board games have improved a lot in the past like 10 years yeah so although angry. although I, I, th- I still think we all like look look forward to the day that like twilight imperium will wind up on a walmart shelf no no absolutely not there are reasons <laughs> like there's a reason twilight imperium isn't on walmart shelves like they're in the kids section like what kids gonna look at twilight imperium and want to play it actually a lot of them because it has like some pretty great art but um i mean they're not gonna know how to play that no i mean there's some board games it's okay to have like games that you have to go seek out that's okay my favorite board game was one we played in the 90s like everything i do i'm a 90s 80s guy Mm -hmm. It was a Star Trek The Next Generation. It came with a VHS tape. And uh, you put in the VHS tape, and like, Cleons had taken over the ship. And basically, the tape was there to keep time. And like, every now and then, the Cleon would interrupt the game and like put somebody in prison or, you know, mess with you in some way. That was such a fun game. Hmm. I remember. Sir, I believe you you were speaking of Gowron. Oh yeah, that's I, right. I think it was him. I remember all those stare at you. Those VHS, all those VHS games were really popular at one time. Like, um, I remember Dragon Strike did it. Um, yeah, I had this had Isaac that. Asimov one that was pretty boring. I bet you can. I bet they're all on YouTube. They are. I know the entire Dragon Strike video is up on YouTube. That Star Trek no, game the... is somewhat of a rarity now. I. Yeah. See it at conventions from time to time, but a complete version is expensive. Yeah, you know those I, little those little snippets from some of those are just rife for riffing or like they are. cutting out for like the best of to like throw up a super chat little nods. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say though, my favorite board game, Cosmic Encounter, is older than I am, so. <laughs> I mean, even amongst all the board game renaissance and all the new board games that have come out in the past 15 years. There's another one that was from my era called the Omega Virus. That was fun. I think I know that one. Heard of it. It had like a talking electronic thing in the center of the board that would like count down the time and stuff. And you had to find keys in order to unlock doors. That was a fun game. Oh, you you guys do know that uh, I got the, the... Return to Dark Tower, right? Mm-mm. Did you know? Yeah, 
the uh, the original old uh, I think it was like Milton Bradley Dark Tower game that was released way back in like the seventies and eighties. Which um, Squeaka actually has a complete uh, version of it at our house somewhere, but um, I was never fortunate enough to get it because it was too expensive and I was just a kid. But yeah. uh, but some company redid it and they put it out a few years ago and I got it and. It's it's got a big electronic tower and everything like that, and it makes noise and it spits skulls out and everything, and it's got miniatures. It's I like cool. I like things that talk and make noise and light up because I'm basically five years old, and that really <laughs> that really appeals to me. <laughs> I I Don't miss get, cool electronic toys. Yeah. Don't get Greg started on jingling keys. <laughs> yeah, laser pointer, distract them. <laughs> Um, well, Caster, did you did you have some uh, show and tell too? I did. I did have a little bit of stuff here, and I thought I I I figured I would cut it down to about four four items here. So okay. uh, let me change over my other. Oh, my oh other you led with the best. I did. Which uh, zoom out. I I so. feel so bad. I have not been keeping up with that. But I'm broke so. It, Titan Comics has been knocking it out of the park with their Conan comics as of late. Just to show you a little bit of the art, like a couple little details I like. We get the map, we get a map of like Samaria kind of telling us kind of whereabouts in the world he is. Uh, one thing that's worth pointing out with these books is that they're not going out to just simply do retellings of the, of the, the famous, you know, Howard stories. Or okay. even some of the Robert Jordan ones, we're not getting those. We're getting little adventures sort of set in between those. Oh, good. Okay. At different points. And the art is breathtaking. That is nice. That is like almost like old uh, Buscema. Real nice. What else you got, bud? Yep. Yeah. But yeah, issue nine, start of a new story. Pick it up, check it out. It's not and, too far along that I can can't catch up on. Oh, Power Rangers, the role playing game. And I I bring this up because this specifically and resolved an issue, a big issue I had with the game, and a lot of other people also had, is that the the game just simply did not have enough monsters. So what this is is a like three hundred page book. That's almost nothing but monsters. Whoa. This is this is thicker than I think the the five E monster manual. I've heard I I've seen the book. Frank has a copy because he's a huge Power Rangers fan, and I am not. But it looks like it had a lot of problems. It it does it does it's I'm not going to deny that. Uh, they kind of rushed it out, and what can I say? I'm a little bit of a sucker for having like for having certain IPs. I think we all have a weak spot for certain ones. Oh, true. Yeah, Which I'm is always, why... I, sorry. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm always wary of really thick um, indie books just because I've noticed a lot of times, especially with um, certain ones, uh, that they put out like 700 monsters when really yeah. what they should have done is put out 100 edited and playtested monsters. Huh. Um, rather than 700 underdeveloped ideas. Oh, Ryan David Good point. about Omega Virus. Yeah, that's a classic. Mm. But like, I, I like genre themed stuff too. Like, if only there was like a kaiju versus mecha game with a lot of crunch and like some war gaming elements that had a cyberpunk feel that's coming out. That's what are, I would are, really want to play. If only. Aren't you aren't you working on that? <laughs> yes, I'm just being stupid. And can I clarify nothing against Power Rangers, the role playing game, because I have no idea those could all be very well edited and play tested. And I don't know anything about that. So, yeah, it's not very well yeah. edited. Okay. Play tested, I don't know. We, but we kind of flip through it and I can't. I don't know if I want to get to play this. So, I mean, the, the, core, the core book, the when there was only just that one book out, they yeah. had maybe what 15 monsters in it total and that included like 
a giant version of the monster and the you know when they get turned into the big kaiju bot the one to fight the kaiju mm -hmm. and they will almost count that as twice over so you wouldn't even have enough to like play just a, a campaign but this does give some rules and some guidance on how to go about doing just that how to make your own which answers a lot of my problems uh, okay. one of the big issues i had there but but the big one of the big draws that got, got me to this whole to what renegade's doing with this is just all the properties and ips they had which is why i did also pick up the factions and actions guide for gi joe and actions and actions so just to kind of show off a little bit we we get some info on the Anti-Venom Task Force, the Dino Hunters, Mega Marines. These are a bunch of the, the more niche factions in the volume one of this little guide. Mm. Which this these factions I don't know as much about. It's the faction two, the next book that I do have some interest to pick it up, which because that's gonna have the Arashikake ninjas, that's gonna have the 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 death uh, Zartan's faction. Dreadnoughts. Yeah, thank you. I want I want to say something else there, but I know I know I wasn't right. Yes, it's okay. You can count on me, the GI Joe nerd. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, because they had to put out like a book for each one of the, the three systems, so this is my much wanted combiner book. Huh. Which adds rules on how to be combiners. Let's That's let's fun. give you rules for like playing for basically putting together a combiner team or how to fight with combiners as a big uh, uh, a threat. I kind of want to see them do the headmasters, but that's just a personal... Well, that's actually in this book. Oh, are they in there? Okay. They are. In fact, we get some rules on how to go about making them. And I was hoping I could find a picture in here, but apparently not. <laughs> Harmony's eyes are just glazing over. I don't know anything about no, this. No, uh, maybe. <laughs> you got to call me out? <laughs> it's okay. Oh, I don't, I'm, the first season of Power Rangers is the only thing I even know remotely a little bit about. I was into Terminator and Predator and stuff like that at the time that Power Rangers came out. So it always felt kind of lame to me. Yeah. Uh, well, I was too old I'm, for Power Rangers. So. I've been going back and I've been kind of watching some of the, the Sentai, so I'm kind of doing a little comparison between them. And it's it's interesting seeing how some things were originally intended. Like, oh, the, the witch was supposed to be Pandora, released from, like, Pandora's box. Who's, like, hates children. And she sings a song about how much she hates children. It's like, what? how did this not get in? Well, I, at some point, um, if I ever managed to get, uh, you know, a little bit of cash put aside again, I'm going to probably buy the whole Gatchaman series just because when I originally saw it, you know, it was Battle of the Planets. Uh, yeah. And I was like three or four years old. But I would actually like to see the original Japanese Gatchaman series because it was supposed to be a lot more um, serious and maybe a little bit more gory. Yeah, I've got the a bootleg Blu-ray of Space Battleship Yamato, Ooh. which is excellent. With Star Blazers over here, you know, same type of situation. Yeah, I wish Optimus Clyde had been on here because he is a huge Yamato fan. Oh, I, big, big, big time. I made the mistake of looking up Gotcha Man on Amazon, and then I found the, the Blu-ray box set. Uh-huh. And it's great because, actually, here, let me... I've I've looked at it. I've I've got it wish listed many many times. I <laughs> well, just for just for showing off for anyone who's anyone who's watching with us. Yep. Uh, <sighs> yeah. And it makes this out of print becomes impossible to to buy ever again. Mm -hmm. And the it. big the big thing that's really catching my eye is the fact that a lot of this is Alex Ross art. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, I, like I mean, the series was a big inspiration for many comic book artists and like you know stuff like that, all throughout the eighties. Pretty 
What were you saying? A double Party? version? Nothing. I just so many colors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very colorful. That's that's my only comment. That's all I got. <laughs> well, I I completed my Berserk set. I completed my Fist of the North Star set. So I guess maybe it's maybe I can start on another set of anime. And since Gachaman's already come and gone and all it entails is just getting the, the box sets. It may not be too yeah. impossible to get. I mean, it's cool and all. It's just, I have a hard time watching really old anime like that. It just doesn't hold up for me. Like, uh, Metzinger and a ton of the robot shows from the 70s. They're cool. They're retro. I get it. Nostalgia. And they're just not, they're not watchable. <laughs> oh, well, how about this one? Watch the original Astro Boy. Oh yeah. How about this one? Let's see what you got there. That is the preview uh opener for um Dungeon Meshi season two. Which I understand that uh Harmony's players are enjoying that. And it's a guard bro! <gasps> Hello. Hello How are you? How are you doing? Is that Harmony Ginger? My gosh, in the Hi. flesh. <laughs> I don't think I've met you either. But I, um, I, I think, yeah, we've, um, I, I know who you are, but, uh, I know, to clarify. <laughs> no, that's not what I, mean. I know who you are, <laughs> freak. God. For once, yeah. let me get through an intro without being awkward about it. Too late. <laughs> so dungeon meshy. Ooh, it's, yes. Uh, really, it's taking the normies by storm. <laughs> Do you like it? Have you watched it? So I read Dungeon Meshi before it was ever an anime because I'm a fucking hipster like that, you know. There you are. And uh, <laughs> and uh, it was a really enjoyable manga. It, it, it took a whole new spin on the manga fantasy genre where they're just eating monsters the mm -hmm. entire time and slowly wearing away that poor elf's mental capacities <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> uh, that's probably the good ones. And then, you know, it's it, it kind of brought up to me, like, there's a... I don't know if how much time you all got today because I ain't got a lot. I got I've been here for a very short while, but like sure. where? But like you know, I don't think like, people ask the question of where did the dungeons come from? You know, because like when Dungeon Meshi, it's a big revolving thing where there's a, a dare we say a dungeon master, kind of making this dungeon happen and create itself and do things. But in a lot of the Mad Mage, RPGs, yeah, the Mad Mage. Thank you. And I thought that big book that kind of propels these things. And but like in other games, where the dungeons come from? Because you got Dungeons and Dragons, sure, but who made the dungeon? Who drugged the damn dragon inside that the first place? You know, no one really, no one asked that question enough. You know, it's kind of a fun little mental teaser. How how, how do your how do your dungeons get made in your setting? That kind of thing. Well, I mean, there's there's two things to that. One, um, I've watched a lot of anime that kind of answers that question with dungeons that basically like almost spontaneously are created from. You know, from just, yeah. you know, sources of energy and stuff. Mm. But um, I think that's kind of less important than what Dungeon Meshi has done for the whole thing. I mean, what it's done for role-playing games oh, for sure, is yeah. cool bec because it's like the first time that, you know, anybody's really sat down and thought about how the ecology of a dungeon Ecosystem. works. <laughs> yeah. What's feeding the I, monsters? You know, that kind of yeah. thing. What, how, yeah. How are the monsters surviving? What are they eating? How are they eating? I mean, a lot oh, God, of Alamo say, wrote this. Who eats the monsters? Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of folks wonder, like, I remember, like, as old days, days feed off the adventures, you know? Like, like I know there's some theory where, like, the ecosystem survives off the bodies of dead adventures. I, fuck, I love that, like, it's that like, mindset. Who watches the Watchmen almost? Yeah. Yeah, but if that's the case, then it's kind of like, well, then only, usually, then it's only the first few levels that uh, get fed, because <laughs> that's usually where your first levels and stuff get killed, is in the first few levels of the dungeon. So, so like, what about all the stuff at the bottom? So, you brought, so yeah, I just came in halfway through, and you're bringing up Dungeon Meshy, so you said there would be a second season? Yeah. That's when things get weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty well, good manga, but things get weird very fast, as per most uh most mangas do they kind of luger you in and then the freak stuff comes out with fangs and claws and grabs you You're like oh god you can't get away that's I might great thing about oh, sorry i might actually give this one a watch i'm not an anime person as much as many of my friends have tried to get me into anime it's just mm -hmm. never 
work. You, I mean, I've watched Miyazaki stuff, but aside from that, I don't know if I can sit through an anime. <laughs> the gateway anime, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a, one other really good series that came out this past this past uh, season that is well worth your your time. Free run. That's what I've heard. Um, oh, I Jesus. might give it a try. If I'm going to give one a try, it's probably going to be this uh, dungeon cooking one. Dungeon mission. Do it. About. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the thing we'll is, see. like, the minute I heard about this series, I immediately thought of you, Ginger. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I do like um, I do like the idea of my players getting um, harvesting as they go and uh that definitely describes my games a little bit my players love cooking from monsters i don't know why it's a universal thing i've noticed Monster among Hunter. every game i've about every game i've ever run mm -hmm. um but i don't know it's something they get real into so <laughs> i might watch it for ideas well but i mean the thing is i'm gonna just blatantly rip it off and ev all of my <laughs> players are gonna know it well, yeah this is this is an idea um and I, I can't claim to be the original, the originator for this, but um, Starfinder, you know, which is, um, you know, Paizo's, uh, basically it's their first step towards Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And I, I called it whenever I started playing Starfinder and was looking at the rules. I, I looked over at my friends and I said, you know what? If they make another edition of, of Pathfinder, it's going to be like Starfinder. And it is. But uh, Starfinder is a lot easier to deal with than Pathfinder 2. But regardless. Um, in Starfinder, monsters don't just, you know, spontaneously collect treasure and shit. Um, a lot of times after you kill a monster, they have particular organs or skin or things that they produce in their environment that are actually worth money. And that's your treasure that you get off the monsters. And that's what got me thinking about it to begin with. I'm kind of like, you know, we, we always come to the the silly conclusion in regular dungeoneering stuff is like, oh yeah, monsters just stock up on treasure and all that, or it's incidental or whatever. And I'm just kind of like, or it's bait. Yeah, or it's bait. I mean, smarter monsters could certainly turn it into bait. Mm. But I, I really like the idea of the monster itself being a harvestable commodity or some byproduct that it creates is a harvestable commodity that is actually the treasure of the monster. I mean, that's Instead just much just, under the game, really, when you think about it. Yeah, it really, yeah. Um, with that, I am going to have to get going, guys. Mm -hmm. I did not have a very long time to stay here. Okay. Um, I will see you guys. Um, I won't be here next week, but I will see you guys soon. Yeah, and you won't Boys be here Saturday, night. right? Uh, I will not be here Saturday, no. All right. Is that your game with Dungeon Delver? Uh, yes, it is, actually. I'm going to meet the Dungeon Delver, I believe, on Saturday. I am so excited for you. I I'm hope you have excited a great for me time. too. Yeah, it's going to be so cool. You get to play with an old legend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm so very I'm excited. I, I and it's actually because of the show because um, we were both on here at the same time, and he said, "Man, it's really um, hot in Central Florida right now." And I was like, "Wait, hold up. Do we live close by?" And yeah, we do. So <laughs> record scratch. <laughs> okay, so I want a full report. On you know, on the next uh, week in Geek, whenever you come back, where his house is, what he wears, full report. No, right? yeah. no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Well, no. So no, we're doing this. I would never go to a person's house who I didn't met, meet. We're go. We're doing this the safe way. He's coming to my house. Um, so anyway, <laughs> to my dungeon where my weapons yeah. are. <laughs> You're the <laughs> scary <laughs> one. So um, of course. Anyway, I will see you guys next in a couple weeks. All right. Bye. Well, it's great having you. Thank you for being yeah, on. Thank you for inviting me. And there you go, Greg. I got her on for you. <laughs> they oh, yeah. Greg. I was just <laughs> so so. This was a little bit of a last minute addition, but I wanted to show this off, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this in with uh, Ginger here still. So, mm. Gart, I think you would you come to appreciate this. Um, you're you're a man of culture. Mm, yes, <laughs> a man of culture. <laughs> Are you familiar? Are, how many of you are familiar with a website called a Annie List? Oh, I, I, yeah. I thought you were. Okay. I thought you were going to say like you know something like uh, you know 4chan or something cool. But... Oh, the infamous hacker. I know that guy. That's a great uh, underwater basket weaving forum. <laughs> <laughs> Mo Mongolian underwater basket weaving. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot about the language patch. 
<laughs> so yesterday was April anyway. 1st and, and you know every now and then you find a website does a, something great for the great for the day and any list is no different in fact I dare say they won this year's April Fools because mm -hmm. we got a series of new of new posters and new updates to many of our favorite anime oh no uh, so I, I have a few of these saved here so bear with me of course we all remember the, the great anime <laughs> <Fearin. laughs> kind of right. obvious wasn't it <laughs> uh you know you, you you we were just talking about of course D dungeon meshi god i just uh, <laughs> just why? just knowing the lore behind that dragon makes me uncomfortable <laughs> well i mean well I, perhaps perhaps you would like uh something perhaps a little more wholesome how about some konosuba what the hell oh, no shrek what are those that's aqua that's megumin uh yeah they've been updated what? they've been why <laughs> You know, speaking of patches, you know, maybe maybe you want something with mechs in your life because we all we all like a big robot or two. Mm. With that in mind, of course, might I introduce you to Mobile Suit Gundam? <laughs> <laughs> Thomas the Tank Gundam? Is, is that a chainsaw? Jesus Christ. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. I remember the heresy uh, detected. Remember the Thomas the Tank Engine uh, mod for for freaking Skyrim with the dragons where Thomas the Tank Engine coming down? Yeah, yes, that was terrifying. I, well, I liked it. Huh? Yeah, I remember that. See, I'd, I was gonna I, say, I, I, no, you go ahead. I like no, the no, Randy the Macho Man Savage one. Yeah, that one's hilarious. I'm not like the other girls. <laughs> so whenever, <laughs> whenever we hear Macho Man, I always think of South Park immediately every time. It's just it's just it's just here. It lives here Look for free, dudes. Apothecary Diaries is breaking bad. Uh, <laughs> this is not I'd win. <laughs> right. Legend of the Galactic Heroes is just Star Wars. Um, you'll note if you in case you haven't noticed no. or haven't quite picked up on it yet, there's a bit of a running trend here, including for the upcoming Suicide Su Suicide Squad Isekai. Oh what's well, it all Shrek? <laughs> well, do you see because there was a little bit of an upset on the website and there is now a new number one and a number one anime of all time do do <laughs> that's not an anime Four chan did that <laughs> um if if you if you allow me here let me let me make the case here for you with their description <laughs> the green ogre sighed his brow furrowed and his ears fallen the cool dark night enveloped his vision as he stare, started through the wind, stared through the window. No one was outside, and that was how he liked it. Or was it? Suddenly, he heard a rustling in the, in the distance. His ears per, per, perked up as, at the sound of footsteps and flames roared, approaching his quaint swamp. Finally, he thought with a grin as he began to repeat an encouraging phrase in his head. You're an all-star. Get your game on. Go play. Oh boy. You see, I thought the number things. one anime. See, I thought the number one anime was fucking King of the Hill. I, did I get finally get upset by Shrek? Is that what happened here? I oh, love the American God. anime King of the Hill. <laughs> God. I didn't realize um, there were Japanese folks who were basically like a marabou. They were like cowboy hats and like western shirts. I had no idea. There's a guy who's like oh, he oh, he like lassos oh, every no. day to practice. <laughs> <laughs> that's been a thing since the 50s it was notorious yeah. in germany but I, but I didn't know i was, I was like that can't be real oh yeah <laughs> that was a oh, so, this is this is this is still live by the way um, oh still live. well okay this is something i thought was an april fool's joke except that it was too early for april fools so when i saw it uh i immediately got like a super duper wood pardon for this oh
Is it me or is more anime going on Netflix now? It seems like um, it's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, in fact, what was it? Uh, Disney and Disney slash Hulu picked up like all of Macross. Ooh, Macross. What? Damn. Why, why would Disney take Macross? That's an ancient anime in terms of scale. But like, it's awesome. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, well, it's great. I'm wrong, but like. Well, I, I mean, there there've been they've been doing numerous numerous. Uh, uh, films all, all along the way and it's just a matter of that's where people are at it, it, it's smart money just to go and reach out this way but that's why the suicide squad is getting an isekai is it uh, that's not yeah. a joke no no that's that's legit well you mean like <sighs> like suicide squad from the comic books yes it's literally called suicide squad isekai you ever like get you lose the will, like you kind of walk along, you lose the will to live, like a little bit. You kind of like sag down and kind of lag. That's what that felt like. Suicide Squad, the Isekai, because they're gonna play with Harlequin. Probably it's gonna be ooh, ooh too much for you. I can't wait. Hooray! Oh, 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 oh! Yeah, there's a website. Great. I gotta look it up. Oh, the... So, and if in fact, actually, let me show you. Let me show you the poster. Uh, up. <laughs> just, I just got the Google image. Oh no, fucking way! <laughs> look at, look at John Cena's fucking character. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hold, hold, hold on, hold on. This is, is this the this is the movie version, pretty much, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So part of the part of the plot involves them going to the most generic of fantasy worlds. Uh-huh. Where there is a princess who looks exactly like Harley Quinn. Of course. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing these 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 uh these things on, 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 on Google images and it's just it hurts to breathe sometimes, let me tell you. It looks like there's like basic there's like there's like classic uh Japanese orcs trying to fight uh dead shot. <laughs> it's got like a weird cowboy bebop thing going on it's it's interesting ain't shirts wearing like cowboy bebop overalls oh the kids love cowboy bebop (laughs) yes yes that is king shark and overalls yeah king shark and overalls i wonder if they're gonna make him uh bisexual in that one too oh yes take your bets on sexualities now kids (laughs) oops all oops all bisexual (laughs) <laughs> God. why did they make the what, what was that soldier guy's name who's like their, their fucking handler What's, they made him like a rick s- standard yeah. tw- standard twinky japanese dude no flag muscle. isn't it isn't it flag or something yeah okay, yeah, rick flag. Here. yeah rick flag that's his name yeah oh jeez yeah, like, th- hold on. Like, look at the character for Rick Flag. It's like the exact 180 of what a soldier would look like. <laughs> like, just absolute. Mind you, uh, Katana is an obvious shoe in for this anime. It's basically just any other. She's basically any other Japanese character in, in any other anime <laughs> you can think of. The you have a samurai sword. Except her, her katana looks like shit, though. Well, it's what the katana did, not how it looks, gay. It's all, it's yes. all, all the inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, anime Joker. I'm not. Now it's funny because look at that uh, the the uh, the art for Amanda Waller. She looks like a Boondocks character. Like, am I just seeing seeing something? Because she looks like she was animated by like the Boondocks team. Like, <sighs> what studio did this? I don't know, but like looking at Amanda Waller, some of her like facial stills, it looks like Uncle. Like this looks like it's taken from the Boondocks, from like a like 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 a still scene, and it's uncanny. It really is. Like the facial construction looks like a Boondock scene. Don't trust those Isekais over there. <laughs> 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 uh, that. Look, I, I I don't hate Harley Quinn, but I'm not vibing with it being Harley Quinn. I mean, they're they're trying to blend DC and anime. Is that even worth doing? Well, they. I mean, they have been making some attempts with that. We saw Batman Ninja come out. Uh, well, uh, yeah. we got we we got uh, the Justice League at Cross Ruby. 
didn't see that. Cross Ruby, what does that mean? Uh, as in, like, the Rooster Teeth series Ruby. Oh, oh you mean the series that's now debunked and the studio shut down? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Big success do, for them. They've got to do the... something because they can't even cross DC with comic books. So. <laughs> That's a low blow, Aries. <laughs> low blow. Homeboy's going for the scrot. <laughs> oh. Yeah, look. Now, now look. She looks like a boondocks character. It's the eyebrows. It's those eyebrows. That screams boondocks. This is this is a suicide moment. <laughs> <laughs> but look at it. That looks like a boondocks saints character. It really does. Yeah, let me go back to that. Not Boondock Saints. No, sorry. That's a the, the Boondocks. The, the Boondocks character. The Boondocks is the movie. Yeah. But that looks like... Way, we're getting a third one. Uh, Saints 3? Yes. What if it was one guy with 24 guns? So you got a serial crusher theory and a... Say so I want so, anything while he's getting coffee? So what is... <laughs> what, what, what is the point of this? I'm trying to think of what this anime is going to be doing trying to bridge the gap between dc fans and anime fans it's like trying to bridge the gap between like tea fans and coffee fans this is not gonna i mean it might happen it might be some overlap but i don't see it really happening now i mean it looks like a real banger anime you're like oh my god i'm blown away but how many times have we been blown away by something new <laughs> well the thing, <laughs> the, I mean, lately? the thing is by and large uh on the comic side they dc and marvel have lost like two generations of, of comic fans. They've given them up to try to chase the movies. And, and then they turn that. around and when they did do movies, they the comics that were in stores, like the when when the when the superhero movies were at their peak, the characters in the comics looked nothing like the characters in the books. No. It's like, oh cool, I want to go read Iron Man because Iron Man is cool and he's a little black girl. I oh, Riri Williams. oh, that's right. That's right. Because they basically, she like stole a suit, didn't she? Oh, yeah. So, sh oh, God, that story is so terrible. <laughs> she stole some blueprints off like the, the dark web or something. Yeah. And then her origin gets so much worse because she's being told she could do anything she wants at all. And then Riri Williams says like, no, that's not good enough. I need to be oppressed. Tell me yeah. something I can never do. You see, I remember how the internet reacted to her uh, her story. It wasn't good. The memes were everywhere, to say the least. It was not a uh, positive moment online. I, I remember that one. It's just like, is it me or I am sh I'm sure I'm going to say something very obvious, but it's like, it just seems like it's a lot of remakes nowadays. Like, at least they're doing it on a different angle with this anime, but like if you look at movies, it's just Roadhouse Two. What? No, Who it's not even a that? two. It's it's not even a two. It is it's a it's basically they're a remake and it's Roadhouse. Um, more road and more house. Like <laughs> Yeah, this. I mean it, it's not called the double deuce for one thing. It's just called the Roadhouse. The Roadhouse. The Roadhouse. Everybody just calls it the Roadhouse. Like, I just, it seems like, like, creativity, I say this all the time, it's probably a, a rote train by now, but there's no creativity left in, the, in in that entire sector. Like, instead of, well, I guess, is would you call turning Suicide Squad into an anime creative? What are my cats doing? Jesus. No, it's a South Park joke that they would, like, make fun of them. Like, they'd be all in the boardroom. <laughs> like discussing what, how they're gonna save the make company. it, make it anime, make it gay. Yeah. <laughs> God, and it's well. Th to be fair, though, they just learned that isekai is a thing because it was literally just added to the dictionary this past week. Like <laughs> the proper dictionary, the yes. Oxford English Dictionary just added isekai. A whole and a bunch here. of other Japanese words that can't be real. I refuse to. I refuse to believe something of that nature. <laughs> Let's see. Is a Kai uh, definition? Would you like an article? Sure, I um, like an article. Here, let me. Oh. We we really I need just, to. I have I have looked this up enough times that I happen to have available. Okay. <laughs> the teacher's like, let me go, let me go. <laughs> uh, so this is from the Oxford English Dictionary website. 
Also included in this update are two words for distinctly Japanese forms of entertainment. Tokusatsu. Isakai and tokusatsu. tokusatsu. No shit. <laughs> Jeez. And, and now there's... Okay. And now we're getting cultured, folks. Mmm, <laughs> delicious culture. Hidigami. I just... I mean... Uh, they're not, they're not invading the anime space. My God, what next? I mean, we we, we saw how uh how, like oh, so is this new so a t shirt real quick. Are you watching mm-hmm. that 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 samurai show on Prime? Is it on Prime or Hulu? Shogun. Shogun. Yeah, have you watched Shogun? No, I want to wait for it to finish before I go and binge it. Great show, by the way. The Portuguese are funny in that show. Every, but, like, everybody has said it's really good. So. People were pissed. Like, <laughs> like we're we're all the black Japanese folks. It's Japan. Yeah. <laughs> like. There weren't. <laughs> like, I there, mean, there's one. There was one later on who was like stranded there or some shit, wasn't he? Yeah, you're talking about. Uh, uh, it was like uh, he's not Roman, Sasuke, he? but uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, but, but it's the exact same thing. Like, it's just I wonder how they're gonna fuck up these animes. <laughs> you know? It's like, what are we gonna do? How, how are they gonna mess this one up? I wonder. It's just always something like that. Like a, a classic, entertaining period show set in Japan and then wanted to shoehorn in all the Hollywood shit and it, it would have ruined it. It would have ruined it so bad. Like they're already kind of doing historical fiction already with it. Cause it's based off a book, but it's just like, imagine if they had gone in and it's completely Hollywooded Japan in like <laughs> at that period. Nah. Mm-mm. Do you have, so teacher, do you have high hopes for this uh, suicide squad anime or is it a suicide attempt? <sighs> I mean, I'm not going to watch it just because I'm not interested, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's not a lot of, you know, Harley Quinn simps that won't just go gaga over it and, and end up making it a big success. Plus, you know, I, it's Japanese studio, so it might be good. It's one of those Harley things Quinn. like, it's, you hate her. <laughs> I don't like her. I hate Harley Quinn. Generation, I cannot stand Harley Quinn. She's basically become like DC's Deadpool, but at least with Deadpool, he gets to have the little stick of breaking the fourth wall. Whereas her, no, she's like as good as like Batman. Harley Quinn beats up the entire DC universe. Yeah. I I mean, no. Well, you see iron, all, all the Jedi live within her and they're teaching her things on the way. (laughs) I am. I I heard a a sigh from t-shirt. Oh, (sighs) <sighs> it's harley harley skywalker <sighs> harley palpatine <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm i'm gonna go die inside now <laughs> just yeah aren't you glad you invited me t-shirt <laughs> no i'm i'm glad i invited you guard but oh my god no it's i'm glad yeah. you're here but you killed my will to live <laughs> yeah I, I, my oh, will to live has died I didn't get to bring up the actual like panels of that little uh, Riri Williams comic. No, I I don't want to. We we probably can't put it on anyway because. China, that's where the fun is. At China, that's where the fun is. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably true. It is false, kids. <laughs> yeah. I, I secretly suspect all of it is is some kind of a ploy to you know somehow you know appease uh, secret masters in in you know an Asian corner of the world. Yeah, the lizard people—they're hiding the government, <sighs> controlling yeah. their tax returns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Don your tin ho- tin foil hats, folks. Alex Jones is calling in. He's calling us to, to go attack the lizard people. <laughs> <laughs> they turn all the anime gay. <laughs> I mean, if you saw Brave Bang Braver in this season, then I mean, you're not wrong. Like, I, it, Matt, it could a, be... a, a robot falls in love with the, its pilot, tells him to get inside his cockpit. Uh, okay, I'm I'm convinced it's all a massive psyop designed to break our will and our spirit, and you know, reduce yeah, real it men to. <laughs> You will I mean, put on the fanboy socks. Yeah, you know. They know that the real men are, are dying and getting old and are uh, suffering from cancel culture and 
the other men are almost oh. indistinguishable from the women now. They're all reading manga. The women are reading manga, psh, anime, and flipping their books, you know, <laughs> reading <laughs> words. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, um, they don't uh, know to charge their phone, read manga, and be bisexual. <laughs> 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 T-shirt into their into their T-shirt. It's gone too far. It's gone yes. too far. <laughs> and with with that, yes, we, we've we've already lost all of our viewers. So we're we're down to like we're down to like five people watching us. So to you five who have hung on this long, thank you very much. And I'm so sorry if your eyes or ears are bleeding or you uh, experience uncontrolled nausea and vomiting and then diarrhea. Anal leakage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My my apologies, but <laughs> but. I, I promise we will subject you to no more, at least not until Saturday, when you can join us again on The Week in Geek. Mm. Where the side effects wear off. Yes. But until then, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you Saturday. Bye.